is a region of high pressure in a longitudinal wave. A compression is a region of high pressure in a longitudinal wave. Uh, that is the answer to 4.1.1. So now we can move to 4.1.2. So 4.1.2 is saying, let's use the diagram to determine the wavelength of the wave, right? Let's use the diagram to determine the wavelength of the wave. So how do we determine the wavelength of a longitudinal wave? It is the distance between two compressions, right? The distance between two compressions. So let's go to our sketch and do some analysis. So from this compression here at A to this compression here should be one wavelength. And then from that compression, to this compression shall be our second wavelength, right? And from the compression to this region of low pressure here that we have shall be half a wavelength. Now we can see that 24 centimeters is equals to 2.5 wavelength, right? So we can go ahead and divide both sides by 2.5 in attempt to find the wavelength, right? And then if we do that, we get wavelength is equal to 9.6 centimeters. So the wavelength of our longitudinal wave is equal to 9.6 centimeters. And then now to 4.1.3, the question says that let's determine the period of the wave if it takes 1.5 seconds for a particle to move from A to B. So it takes 1.5 seconds uh, in order to travel 2.5 wavelength. Right, that is the information we have. It takes 1.5 seconds to travel 2.5 wavelength, right? And we want the period. So let's go back to the definition. What is the period? The period is the time it takes to complete one wavelength, right? And then in this question, we're being told that to complete 2.5 wavelength, we take 1.5 seconds. So in order to find the period here, we're going to say 1.5, the time it takes to complete 2.5 waves, divided by 2.5, right? And then if we do that, we're gonna be able to find the time it takes to complete one wavelength. And then if you compute that, we're going to get 0 0.6 seconds, right? So the time it takes to complete one wavelength is 0 0.6 seconds, right? You see the time it takes to complete 2.5 waves divided by 2.5 waves, and then you will get uh, the period. And then now off to 4.2. Two boys conducted an experiment to determine the speed of sound in air. They stood 500 meters away from a mountain and a boy fired a toy gun directly towards the mountain. And then while the other boy fired the Toy gun, another boy simultaneously started a stopwatch. It then recorded the time to hear the echo. Uh, the experiment was repeated three times and the readings were recorded. Right, and then uh, the first question, 4.2.1, how is an echo produced? An echo is produced by sound waves reflecting off a surface, right? So an echo is produced by sound waves reflecting off a surface. And now 4.2.2. So 4.2.2 says, let's determine the average time for the above readings, right? Uh, so we can say that X bar from mathematics is equal to the sum of all X values divided by the number of 10, right? So here we have 3.01 plus 2.95 plus 3.04, right? So we just adding up the time taken for the three experiments, right? And then we divide everything by three because we conducted three experiments. So the average time it took sound to travel to the mountain and back to the boys is three seconds. And then let's go and do the next question, 4.2.3. It's saying let's calculate the speed of sound. So we need velocity, right? Uh, but then we have the distance. We know that uh, the sound, we know that the sound waves travel 500 meters to the mountain and 500 meters back to the point, right? So we can say that our distance is 500 plus 500 because the sound waves travel to and from the mountain. So our distance will be uh, 1000 meters. Uh, but what is our time? We just completed it 
in 4.2.2 right our time is three seconds so here we can go ahead and say that the velocity is going to be equal to the distance divided by the time and then the distance uh, that is a thousand and then the time is three right uh, it only takes three seconds and then if you compute that you're going to get 333.3 recurring meters per second right and now off to the last question 4.2.4 it says that out of the speed of sound in water compared to the speed of sound in air choose from greater than less than or equal to we know fully well that it is greater than right it is greater than uh, that is because water is more dense compared to air